<laughs> Hi guys! Hi! We're here to cook things for you in our fabulous outfits. Just the kind of content you were looking for today, right? Oh yeah. <clears throat> oh yes, okay. So, today we're going to make shakshuka. Or some variation. Of. Or like a baked eggs, whatever you want to call it. Shakshuka is, um, I believe, originally a North African dish that is also uh, eaten a lot in Israel as a breakfast dish. Mm. And it's basically eggs cracked into a sauce, traditionally kind of spicy tomato-y, but you know what, you can do it with anything Ish. you want. That is our, that is our particular um, motto when it comes to cooking and food is you just do whatever you want. Do what you want, do what you want. Make I it up as you go along. Yeah. Mel makes a very mm. more traditional, more, slightly more traditional, I actually uh, had made it many times before realizing it had any spices in it. So, oh. and today's a completely different version. Right. So, yeah. Let's just wait and see what's going to happen. Mine is like a greens with eggs baked into it, which is, you know, people, there are a lot of, you'll, you will find versions of that called green shakshuka online. Um, I had always just called it like a baked eggs with greens. Uh, but you know what? You do you. So, speaking of doing what I want to do, yeah. I'm going to start showing you. All right, let's... The shakshuka! <laughs> That's so cute! That's a huge eye there. All right, so this baked eggy thingy dish that I'm going to make involves both the random greens that we have in the fridge and some leftovers. So um, one of the things that a lot of people have asked us about when making food waste feast dishes is how to repurpose leftovers and keep things interesting. So since you're probably cooking a lot at home and eating a lot at home, it's great to have a sense of how to repurpose the things that you've eaten so you're excited to eat them again. Because if you're not excited to eat them and they hang out in your fridge and then they throw them, you throw them out, it's so sad. It is so sad when leftovers get thrown out. So we made this, I made this braised cabbage like two days ago and it was good but as you can see i made this entire pot's worth right it was a whole cabbage yes. so that it was, was quite a, it was a lot. lot of cabbage and it was a really <laughs> big cabbage so now i'm gonna repurpose it so what i've got here is some onions that have been sauteing for i don't know 10 15 minutes in olive oil and i'm going to put in some of this braised cabbage uh my general I don't even know if you could call it a rule, but basically if it's savory and uh, if it's savory, then I can use it in other savory things. Right. So it really helps to have lots of like relatively simply cooked vegetables in your fridge because then you can use them mm. in other things. So this was um, kind of braised, stewed with white wine and uh, veggie stock and I think some butter and onions and garlic and those things are good in everything. So, you know, if you've got that cooked in your fridge, then you can repurpose it. This would also be a really good soup. Um, you could turn it into a cabbage soup. You could add it to a stew. You could add it to a tomato sauce. You could uh, put it in your freezer because yeah. veggies freeze pretty well, mm -hmm. almost all of them. Um, so, you know, flexible. We're all about flexibility here at Food Waste Feast. Yes. I'm going to let this heat up a little bit while I get my other ingredients ready and then Mel can tell you about hers. Yes. All right. Let's get this turned around. Here we go. I have some sauteed onion too and some sauteed zucchini. And I, sorry, I'm just trying to get the right angle here. here. I will. Um, <laughs> Take over for this because what you Thank wanted to see was my face and my very large eyes. <laughs> I know you I... did. All right. Turn that around. Ba boom, boom, boom. All right. So we have some garlic and ginger here. Let's get that in there. Mm, garlic and ginger. Yeah, All right. I am spicing mine up a little bit today. Okay. Sometimes I do like just tomatoes and sometimes I like to spice it up a bit. You know, if you guys watch the curry episode, I do like my food pretty spicy. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more robust. It's your okay. Malaysian background. It is. Yeah. I have in here mm -hmm. a pretty. tablespoon of coriander powder, um, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, mm. and a few dashes of cayenne pepper. Yum. So we're going to chuck that in there. So this is just sauteed onions, sauteed zucchini. Yeah. 
spices. Nice. Exactly. Normally, uh, when I've done the spicy version, I use fresh tomatoes. They don't really have fresh tomatoes, so I'm going to go with this marara sauce, and it's going right. to work just as well. Yeah. But I do also want a little bit more texture, so I'm going to add some of these little cherry ones. Yeah. Fry it up a little bit. Yum. Generous amount of salt. Generously salted is how we cook Ooh. here. Pepper. Yum. Yeah. Yum. Okay. Now. Oh yeah, you can smell that. Mm. Smells delicious. And now we're just gonna add some of this. So heating spices in oil helps them get developed. Uh, helps them develop delicious flavors. So if you're making something um, that involves, you know, spices like turmeric and cumin and coriander, then you can add them in when you're sauteing things in oil and it's delicious. One of my favorite things to add to this is mushrooms, which Ooh. we don't have today, but if you have them at home, Ooh. put them in for sure. But there's so many things you can put in here. Yeah, so let's play a game. Three things that you would put in your shakshuka. Me, always mushrooms, mm. spinach. Okay. I love to put spinach in there mm -hmm. and cook it in the tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Onion, garlic, there's one and three, but I'm going to keep going. Keep going. I love the zucchini in there. Nice. Um, and a little, Ooh. shake it up a bit. I'm going to put some coconut milk in it. Because curry and coconut milk it's, it's go together. It's kind of like a little curry version of shakshuka. Like happy everything. Yeah. Like I've put cabbage. burgers and fries. <laughs> I have put cabbage in here before. Mm. Um, nice. Just so many things. Nice. So I like to make mine as kind of a greens version. And I have done this with kale, chard, um, collard greens, um, beet greens, and what else? Yeah, basically I, so what I like to do is um, start with bacon. So, you know, like many things, bacon is delicious. Ooh, Mel's going coconut milk, that looks so good. Yum. Ooh, yum. So you're making a more of a saucy thing. Yes. Mine is more of a greens thing. So even though this cabbage is not green anymore, it is, it was originally a green cabbage. And so what we do, what I'm doing is um, just kind of adding all these greens. So there are, this is shredded zucchini. This is cabbage. And then I'm going to pop in a bunch of baby spinach. And what's cool too is that there are also a couple of different ways to do your eggs. Um, you kind of make a well in the sauce that you have or the cooked greens or whatever it is. And um, you can either cook it on a stove or you can pop it in the oven, which is what I'm going to do. So um, Mel is going to do hers on the stove top and I'm going to do mine in the oven at 375. And uh, oh yeah, I got distracted. What I was saying about the one that I usually do is I like to ba uh, cook bacon, then take out the bacon, use the bacon fat to saute the vegetables, and then you crack your eggs in and I'll show you from there. Yes, bacon in here, sausages, leftover sausages, mm. leftover steak. Does anyone have leftover steak ever? I don't I'm know, not sure. you it never does, know. It happens sometimes. When you have kids, there's always leftovers. Um, big shout out to Cox Farms. I went to mm. the grocery store a week or so ago and there was no eggs left. And that caused me some anxiety. Tragedy. Cause I am <laughs> obsessed with eggs. Mel needs like 24 we, to 36 we, eggs in her fridge at I all get, times or she's like anxious. <laughs> I get two trays every time I go to Costco, <laughs> which is four dozen. And so I went to our local egg farm. I contacted the lady whose number I happen to have in my phone. She texts uh, when you're uh, she when does. she's ready to she come to the farmer's me, market. And um, I picked up 12 dozen eggs. 12 <laughs> dozen eggs. 144 <laughs> eggs. For two families. For two families. I, I feel like maybe we're probably going to have most of them, but who knows? You know. Um, guys, but um, now I feel calmer. Yes, now everything is okay. And actually, that is a good thing to just mention. Eggs are a great thing to have around when you are not going to the grocery store often because um, people often get worried about, you know, eggs going bad, but eggs can last a month more. 
Um, they will hang out in your fridge for a very long time. I have literally never had an egg go bad. I, you see all these things online that are like, here's how to test if your egg has gone rotten. I'm, I've never in my never, life had to do that. Never, never happens. Um, so also you can freeze eggs. Uh, you don't want to do it in the shell. You can crack them and um, whisk them and then freeze them like that, leave a little extra room. Uh, the yolks get a little bit weird if you do it, so that's why it's better to whisk them and, not, and then if you put them in the shell, they'll crack as we have found by unintentionally freezing some eggs. But, ooh, ooh, important part. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. I am gonna do three eggs because I don't wanna waste eggs so, oh, that we're not gonna eat right now. Yeah, so we kind of go egg, egg or two per person. But, um, so we're gonna go, let's see. There's three adults three, in the house Yeah, there's right three adults now. in the house. So I'm gonna do three exactly. eggs. And, and I will do three eggs and then. This dish is a little too saucy to make a well. So just chuck them in on the top. Mm. And. Mm. Ooh, and a cover. cover, all right. Now, so. I have notoriously been always very bad at baking bread. Mm. Look at this bread. What? I've it's, already had two slices this morning. It is very It's already delicious. half on. Um, I was like, if this looks good, we'll use it for the shakshuka. And it almost got finished. So uh, I might share this with you guys over the next couple days or next yeah. week. Because um, I feel like there's a lot of people baking bread at home right now. If you are interested in learning this awesome bread recipe, let us know. We would love to hear it. It's it's from, uh, what is it? It's a, uh, you can look it up. It's artisan bread in five minutes a day so i'm super happy about it i'm gonna be churning out loaves for two families mm. probably every other day i think what is there <laughs> there's like five loaves worth in the yes. uh yes something like that and you just keep it in your fridge and just scoop out the dough whenever you want it bring it to room temperature bake it voila amazing I'm so impressed. This is the best bread I have ever baked. Yes. So I'm really happy about it. And if I can bake this, then anybody can. Because yes. I am truly a bad bread baker. <laughs> you know what is cool too? <laughs> you, uh, we also have made, here, you're getting a tour of my kitchen, but I'm going to show you the bread that I made that, you know, turned out okay. It's not great. See how, okay, so see how dense that is? It does not have all the beautiful aerated bubbles that Mel's had. But... You know what? It was still pretty tasty and you can always find things to do if your bread does not turn out to be delicious like this. We still ate it, but once it is a little staler, I'm going to cut it up and turn it into croutons or breadcrumbs. Actually, now that I realize that, there are... Here's some I made earlier. <laughs> <laughs> totally unintentionally. This is um, a focaccia that we made a month ago and you know, it was okay, but not amazing. We ate half of it and then froze the rest. Then I um, defrosted it a couple days ago. I spread it out on a, um, the chunks. I spread the chunks out on a baking sheet and baked for maybe 15 minutes at 350. And then they got all hard and then I pulsed them in the food processor to make crouton to make you know bread crummy croutons things so actually these would be delicious on top of the shakshuka that we're making um they would be delicious on top of a mac and cheese they would be delicious on top of a salad you could also um oh i put them on top of pasta like a carbonara a couple days ago and it was delicious basically it just adds crunch and flavor so yummy good bread not so successful bread not so successful bread always save your bread freeze it if you need to cut it into pieces and freeze it so <clears throat> My eggs are all, mm, they need a few more minutes. Now, it seems like I have a lot of sauce in here for only three eggs. And this is how I normally do it when I'm at home. Um, I would have four eggs in there, two mm. for me, two for my husband. Mm. Um, but then I scoop out however much sauce we want with our eggs. And then I tub up the rest, I put it in the fridge, and I've got instant shakshuka the next day. Smart, smart. The day after that. So these kinds of eggs, you kind of want to just make as many eggs as you think you're going to eat yeah. and then save the sauce because this kind of egg don't won't reheat very yeah, well. Yeah, they don't anything. reheat very well, yeah. but hang on. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look. Oh, that looks good. Oh, yes. We are about to have fresh bread and check you good. Yes. And while that goes, I'm going to show you guys my oven version. All right. Oh, sorry. Oops. Me again. <laughs> okay. Come there we go. Take a look at my sauteed cabbage, leftover cabbage. Um, 
spinach, and zucchini. Mm. So what I'm going to do is I'm making kind of little wells. wells. And then I'm going to grab... If it's not as saucy as mine, you can do that, and then they just nestle right in there in amongst yeah. all the vegetables and get really yummy. Get some of the uh, eggs from this old school pink styrofoam container. Yeah, but not it's the best. You can return the carton, and yes. they're local, pasture raised, yes. uh, super sweet lady who runs them. So you know, I'd rather keeping it local. Them. So as you saw, Mel's doing her eggs on the range. And I am gonna do mine in the oven. It's really kind of, you know, up to you. The nice thing I like about the oven is that you can walk away. Ooh, whoops. So if you ever drop an eggshell into something, the best way to get it out actually is to use the rest of the eggshell. Yep, it it's magnetizes. They magnetize exactly. to each other. You just go, it's the easiest way to get it. I think I got it all out of there. So we'll know. give that one to Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes happen. It's okay. And I'm gonna put this in a 375 degree oven for um, seven to nine minutes, seven to ten minutes. And uh, you just want to make sure that you have a turn off the burner. Make sure that you have an oven safe pan and that. Is what you need to get that done, and it's nice you can just walk away and yep. you know. You could finish it on the stove top if you want. You could. Put a lid on it. Um, let's have a look at these eggs. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh! Okay, I'm super excited about this. Let's switch it off. How many times have I burnt my mouth on shakshuka? <laughs> um, more times than I've burnt my mouth on pizza or dumplings. That's a lot. So shall we? Um, I think we're probably we're gonna dig done. into this yeah and we will post pictures of the baked eggs so you can see what everything looks like as always if you have any questions let us know, you know where we are talk to us um ask what you can put in shakshuka send us your pictures of your yep. shakshuka tag us see. yeah and uh we'll try to put a step-by-step -step up so you guys can see and make it we're doing a lot more either live shows or uh, step-by-steps in the highlights. So yeah. we'll go to our highlights now for yesterday's bolognese, which is made with mushrooms and cauliflower. The veggie pot pie, mm -hmm. yum. Made with a whole bunch of random stuff. We're all about random stuff. What, yeah. can, you sh yeah. what can you throw your random shit into? <laughs> Shakshuka. Random shit on toast. Bolognese. <laughs> pot pie. Get rid yes. of all the random shit in your fridge. Don't throw it out. It's important. Okay. Especially now. Bye. Bye.